Welcome back, friends. Ireland here with a Reddit relationship story about a guy in a very terrible situation with a pretty sneaky wife. But it has a pretty interesting ending in the update, so make sure you stick around to the very end. So he's 44 and she's 39. He says, We've been married for 11 years, no kids, and we were a pretty chubby couple until two years ago when I had a blood test done. It came out that I was prone to contracting diabetes, gout, and hypertension. This really scared me, so we both bit by bit started to have a really healthy lifestyle. I went from 117 to 85 kilograms, and and my wife, let's call her Jane, went from 83 to 65 kilograms. What is that in pounds? Okay, so he went from about 260 pounds to 190, and she went from about 180 to 140. We attended the gym almost daily in the afternoon where a fitness coach worked. Let's call him Baldy. <laughs> okay, I think we already know where this story's going. He continues, When my wife started getting in shape, I noticed most guys turning to see her. I felt so proud of her. She's fairly busty and has magnificent legs. Of course, Baldy wasn't the exception. <laughs> <laughs> I notice he likes to check out women's backsides and even saw him doing this several times. He likes to show off how ripped he is. When Jane and I were regulars at the gym, I noticed she was enjoying the attention she got from men. One time we were using the elliptical machines and in front of them there was a cable machine. Baldy took off his t-shirt and started doing crossovers. <laughs> what the... I turned to Jane and made a face like, can you believe this guy? But she was just staring at him and started to wet her lips. <laughs> oh man. Uh, yeah, that's not a good sign. Then I look back at Baldy and I swear he was grinning. <laughs> Perhaps he was, but if you're the jealous type, this could just be in your head. I felt crushed. I mean, I was getting in shape, but I'm not as muscular and fit as he is. When we were driving home, I made a comment about him showing off, and Jane said, Really? I didn't notice. I told her, You were staring right at him. She said, I don't remember. I must have been thinking about something else. So I shrugged it off and kept driving, but from there on, I noticed that they were talking more and more frequently at the gym. Some weeks later, Jane was doing squats using the Smith machine, and suddenly Baldy went up to help her. Isn't he nice? He was grabbing her by the waist, and I got angry. She finished the first set, and I got there and told him in a not nice way, I got it from here. He just smiled and told me, no problem, buddy. He calls everybody buddy. Then he walked off. Jane knows me very well, and when she heard my angry tone, she says, oh my lord, to which I replied, we'll discuss this at home. At home, drama blew up. She called me immature and jealous. I told her I noticed that he was trying to get into her pants, and she said that she knows that, but she would never cheat on me. Oh, she even knows this guy's up to it. So she knows what this guy's intentions are, and even though she wouldn't cheat, she's still allowing him to touch her in the gym. I mean, this is completely inappropriate. But anyway, I said, then why'd you let him touch you? She said she didn't want to be rude. About an hour into our argument, we agreed to change gyms. So then we go to another gym, and he's a coach there too. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. I made that up. So we go to a new gym to work out, but Jane was resentful towards me for the following few months. Her argument was that I don't trust her. On the third month after we changed gyms, a very good opportunity opened up in my job, but in the afternoon. We discussed it and I took the job, which means we had to attend the gym at different hours. I went in the morning and she went in the afternoon. This is when it all went south. Jane's resentment increased and we barely spoke. I sent her messages telling her about my day. I sent her memes and told her that I missed her. But she rarely replied or just gave short responses like, Yes, okay, same here, haha. Ha. I was very worried and suggested we go to couples therapy. She said I was the one who needed therapy because I'm the one with the trust issues. I agreed. I was so desperate to fix our marriage that I even thought it was all my fault. So the following year, 2022, I went to therapy, but Jane's behavior didn't really change. We weren't intimate anymore because she was never in the mood, so I snooped in her phone but didn't find anything out of the ordinary. Then I looked in her car for a second phone, nothing. I checked her phone again to see her map history. It only showed me house, work, house, gym, house. Whenever I tried to talk to her, she just said she feels like she's having a 40s phase and that it'll pass. I never had any evidence that she was cheating, so I just continued working and worrying. We live in a condo and the security guard, a very cheerful guy named Mr. P, always greeted me. We chat a lot and one day he was touching his shoulder and told me that the day before he'd moved a heavy sofa and was in some pain. I was sympathetic and then he dropped a bomb on me. He says, can I arrange a meeting with your massagist? I told him, who? He said, the guy who came over yesterday to massage Mrs. Jane. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> it took me a second to process this and then I told him, do you have a video of the guy? I think he noticed I was pale and hurried to show me. Guess who it was? Baldy, of course. <laughs> oh no. He's come a few times to massage my wife. Oh, he came a few times, all right. 
So I took the day off and started investigating. I asked a coworker for his car and in the afternoon I followed Jane. She parked her car at the mall where the gym is and there's Baldy waiting for her. They giggled and behaved like a couple. Kisses, hugs, and I nearly fell to tears. They walk a couple of blocks and go into a residential area. I tried to follow them with my phone ready to record, but the guard stopped me and asked, can I help you? I just said, what a nice couple. Do you know them? He said he thinks that they're newlyweds. He can't tell me anything else. Oh man, that's terrible. I called Jane, but she never answered. Then I went to her car in the mall and wondered why that place doesn't show on the map. I dial again and I can hear her phone inside the car. Well, I guess that's why. I also found out Jane hasn't attended the gym in eight months. I didn't know at the time that the previous night would be the last time I would ever sleep in the same bed as Jane. Then I went home and called my parents. Fortunately, my dad answered and I told him everything. I was crying and he comforted me and told me to get evidence while he contacts one of his friends who's an excellent divorce lawyer. Jane called me once she saw the two missed calls and I just told her I was already at home. Then she said, I'm on my way home from the gym. My butt is killing me. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that booty's really killing her. When she saw me, she asked, what happened? Why did you cry? I don't know how, but I was mentally focused. I smiled and told her I got the flu and that's why I left work early. Wait, what? What? How did she know you were crying? I told her, don't come near me. It might be the bug and I'll get tested tomorrow. I'll sleep in the spare room. She agreed and that night I cried silently and didn't sleep a wink. At nearly midnight, I heard her giggling. I guess she's messaging Baldy, but I didn't find any evidence of her contacting another guy. Then it hit me. Why didn't I see it earlier? I bet this guy is disguised as one of her female co-workers. In the morning, while Jane was in the shower, I took her phone and created a session in my laptop. Then I put her phone back in the same place. Then I saw it. Under a female name, the profile picture was a dumbbell. <laughs> I'm surprised it wasn't an eggplant emoji. <laughs> I entered and most of the conversations were deleted. I guess they used work words as code in case I snooped. She said, can you deliver the papers in my desk? I know she doesn't have a desk at work. I'm going to the meeting. Where are you? My boss is in the office and he's clueless. Pretty clever. I guess I'm the boss because I know her boss is a woman. Jane got out of the shower and saw the condition I was in and said, you look worse. Why don't you stay with your parents? I denied the idea, thinking of getting evidence. At work, I was in zombie mode, thinking how to get evidence. I might install secret cameras in my house, but Baldy rarely ever goes to my house and Jane might find them, unless I'm out of the picture. I texted Jane and told her I'm positive for the bug and I'll stay at my parents' house because I might need help. She liked the idea and told me she would miss me, but she'll call me every day. Yeah, I bet she really loves that idea. When I hung up, I called my dad and brother. Then I got home and she had already packed a suitcase for me. Oh <laughs> man, she was eager, huh? She was so eager to get rid of me. <laughs> I told her I'll take my laptop and then I checked her messages. Boss will be out of the office. Want to come to my desk? Oh man. She sent this message almost immediately after I told her I was positive for the bug. We didn't have dinner, no kisses, no hugs. I noticed her watching her watch twice. From the door, I told her, I'll miss you. I was expecting her to shut the door in my face, but she walked me out to my car. Then I leave and my dad and brother were outside of the building waiting for Baldy to appear, but he didn't show up. After a half hour, I got curious and wondered why she walked me out to my car. Of course, because Baldy was already inside the building waiting perhaps inside her car. It would be very suspicious if her massages suddenly came within the hour. So I came back, hurried to my house and then entered silently. I heard music coming from the bedroom and moaning. Yikes. Next to the door, there's a sofa. His and her clothes were on it. I set my phone to record and opened the bedroom door and there she was, my wife, the love of my life for 11 years on all fours with Baldy behind her. Oh no, this is so bad. I got a good few seconds of both their faces when they saw me open the door and Jane screamed then covered herself with a blanket. Baldy went alpha male immediately, walking bear towards me. Oh man, this guy's got a ripped, completely stripped down dude coming at him. This sounds absolutely awful. I'd be like, get that thing away from me, bro. <laughs> I took a shot of him raw dogging my wife. He yelled aggressively at me. Why don't you go for a walk, buddy? <laughs> what? So we can get back to getting with this guy's wife? I hit his throat with my hand open. <laughs> you slapped him? Come on, man. This guy's raw dogging your wife and you use an open hand with it? I mean, come on. You just gotta go close fist in a situation like this. <laughs> he says, I saw this move in the Mel Gibson movie Ransom. <laughs> this guy's getting fighting tips from Mel Gibson flicks. Where you going? 
I suppose this is better than what I was assuming. The next second, Baldy was coughing and gasping, kneeling on the floor. I yelled, get out of my house, and kicked him out. I threw his clothes at him when my dad, brother, and Mr. P were arriving. I told him, I'll take it from here, and then close the door. Oh, he's a tough guy now. Jane was still on the bed, covering herself. She was trembling, and I told her, I have never hurt you, nor will I ever. Get dressed, and I'll wait for you in the living room. While I was waiting, I sent the video to my lawyer, and he answered, I'm so sorry for you, but jackpot. A few minutes later, Jane showed up. She couldn't look me in the eyes. I started recording the conversation and I asked, why? She didn't answer. Was I such an awful husband to you? She started crying, but again, didn't answer. Do you love him? She shook her head with no words. I stood up and hit the table. Say something, damn it. She opened her eyes wide and started trembling again like a puppy when it's scared. So wait, did she shake her head yes or no? You never said that part. I've never yelled at her before. I sat and talked calmly. My lawyer's going to contact you about the divorce. Get a lawyer yourself. She finally spoke. We can fix this. Fix what? Our marriage has been over since Baldy came into the picture and you chose him over me. It was a mistake. No, it wasn't. It was a choice. You chose this and now you'll face the consequences. What did you think was going to happen when I found out? Silence again. Go to your sister's and tell her the truth or I'll show her the video. Then Jane went to the bedroom and started packing. I followed her and watched. Since two days ago, I was trying to convince myself my wife is long gone. The person who I shared my house with is not my wife. But seeing her, putting her clothes inside the suitcase neatly with her gracious movements and those little things I love about her really hit hard. I went to the spare room and started ugly crying. Oh no. <laughs> I did my best. I did my best. Of all the crap I give men on this channel about crying, I would have to say in this specific situation, for once it's actually called for. He says, I heard when she closed the main door, she picked up her clothes that were on the sofa. She made the bed where I caught them and I dropped on the floor. Then a while later, I called my dad. He told me Baldy wanted to press charges, but Mr. P told him he didn't sign in, so he's technically trespassing and the condo can sue him. So he dropped it and went out. The next morning, my phone had a lot of Jane's messages apologizing and asking for a second chance. Yeah, don't do it, bro. Just move on. He says, I just blocked her. My sister-in-law called me. Apparently, Jane hasn't told her what happened yet, just that we're fighting. I guess it's good my father-in-law has already passed, so he doesn't have to witness Jane's behavior. She was the youngest and his favorite. My mother-in-law is senile and has dementia. All of this happened a week ago, and next week, Jane's going to be served papers. So then this guy has an update after this. So he says, I'm back with a juicy update, and you're going to enjoy this as much as I do. <laughs> Well, that's good. And if any of you are enjoying this, make sure you give this video a like or leave a comment below to boost this video in the algorithm and keep these stories coming. But real quick, I just got to say, I don't understand this thing with women who cheat. And clearly, I mean, she's going far out of her way to be with this other guy. Clearly, you're not into the relationship. So why not just let it go? I really don't get these women who have no respect for their husbands. They have no respect for their relationship or vows. Yet once they get caught being unfaithful, they somehow want to try to change their tune and want to work on getting things back to normal. But Anyway, let's get into the update. He says, To those of you who think my story is fake, you're entitled to think whatever you want. I just hope my blah, blah, blah. Okay, this has nothing to do with the story. So then he blabs on for a good while until finally he says that he showed the owner of the gym the video of his wife with this trainer guy. He says, I told Frank the whole story and he listened carefully. Then after I finished, I showed him the video. He stayed silent for a moment thinking. Then he said, you're not going to like this. I just thought, what now? Frank called the receptionist to bring Harry, another coach, and Baldy's friend. He has a big beard, and Frank asked him to tell me about Baldy's girlfriend, so fasten your seatbelts, because this is good. Is it really good? Because you said that before, and then you blabbed on for an hour, telling us every detail of what you did throughout the week. We don't care. So he says, according to Harry, and I love how it's like, was this guy's name really Harry? Harry and Baldy? <laughs> Baldy is head over heels for Jane, and Frank confirmed it. He told me Baldy had many complaints from female members, but for the last month, he's changed. No complaints, and he's very professional to all the members. And Harry told me something that made my jaw drop. Apparently, Baldy is trying to marry Jane by baby trapping her. I was trying to process this information when I felt something startling in my chest. I laughed so hard I teared up a bit. Frank and Harry were very confused. Then Harry asked, what's going on? And Frank explained that it's Baldy's girlfriend's husband. Then he left. Next, we discussed about firing Baldy. Frank said he has to report the situation to the coaches association and he surely has to fire him because Jane was a gym member and because of this, Frank's gym could have legal repercussions. As far as his license as a trainer, I need to make a legal document explaining Baldy is the reason for my divorce. 
my attorney will give the video to the trainer's association's attorney, and Baldy will lose his license from the association. The association does not tolerate such conduct. Also, he doesn't have the money to pay for somebody who will represent him. Then when I was leaving the gym, someone yelled for me to wait. It was Harry. He told me he was sorry about what's happening and that Baldy never told him who, was, who his girlfriend was. He just said he met her at the mall. I thanked him and took a step towards the exit. He rushed and said, can you tell me what happened? I told him pretty much everything that you heard, that he was getting with my wife and now I'm divorcing her. So at this point he starts asking me all kinds of questions and I realize he's trying to keep me there because Baldy's on his way and wants to talk to me. I told him I realized what he was doing and he said, please talk to him, he's really desperate. He was crying yesterday, your wife isn't returning his calls. So I asked him why I should care if he's miserable. But I decide to wait and see what he wants. He came running 10 minutes later and saw me waiting for him. He extended his hand, I crossed my arms and left him standing there with his hand out. What do you want? He sat in front of me and said, listen buddy. I said, stop right there, we're not buddies. He seemed apologetic and said, okay, my bad. I want to say I'm sorry for everything. I never wanted to hurt you, I really care about Jane. I told him, well you just said three lies to my face. You're not sorry, you did mean to destroy my life and you just care about yourself. He changed from apologetic to annoyed. Okay, whatever man, just tell me where Jane is. I said last time I saw her is when I was kicking her cheating butt out of my house after I kicked you out with no clothes on. <laughs> I knew Harry was listening and Baldy's face turned bright red. That was a cheap shot. I should sue you, he said. As far as I know, you entered my home illegally and perhaps you were erping my wife. I have videos of you getting out, but you didn't sign in. He said, okay, I'm sorry. Please tell Jane I need to speak to her. In that moment, Frank came in because I guess he could see what was going on through the security cameras. Everything okay in here? Everything's fine, Frank. I was just telling this sissy I want... <laughs> what I want. What I want is what is coming for you. What you deserve. I want to crush your dreams just like you did mine. You want kids? Well, guess what? You're never going to have them. Baldy says, what's that supposed to mean? But then Frank asked him to come into his office. Harry looked impressed. He grabbed Baldy's arm and pulled him. Dude, you're in deep crap. Then I left. <sighs> so now on day 12, I feel I'm ready to face Jane. I'm still grinning while I type this. And that's pretty much the end of this story. Not as juicy of an update as this guy seemed to think it was. I don't know. I guess he's feeling good about himself, so he's exaggerating. Like how exciting this update really was. But anyway, let me know what you all think of this story. Subscribe if you're new and make sure you check out my main channel for more life and relationship based content. Till then, hope you all take care of yourselves, support and be good to good women. Peace.